What's going on YouTube? Today we are wrapping up OWASP API Security Top 10, the second room. And according to the videos I have been publishing, this is the fourth and the last part of OWASP API Security Top 10. So in this video, we're going to carry out the last three tasks, four, five, and six. Okay, so we deployed the machine and the task four, which is the point we will start with, is about injection vulnerabilities as always guys let's immediately start and we explain why we are doing a challenge so we take so weird anyway so we have slash api rule 8 slash user slash login underscore v it's so going to remove the underscore v here slash user login underscore v okay and the as you can see the request should be post and here we use the parameters okay so what's going on here so this api has been created to allow you to log in okay this is a url that's kind of simulation to the login process so we use post request and we have the parameters that are used to log in normally when we log in we use username and password so let's see here so we have the username password and username so username and password okay the username happens to be admin so to demonstrate injection vulnerabilities we have to first start with sql injection and all you know all of you guys know that in sql injection the simple payload the first or the simplest payload is this one codes space or space one equal one because this one breaks the logic of the database to return all of the accounts all of the information dump all of the, everything in the database well okay or one equal one and that's it oh we forgot this to comment out everything and we use the code we're gonna send okay as you can see here we got the authorization key the authorization key can be used to log into the account if we use that in the authorization header here we use post request or get request and along with the authorization key provided as the header we can get all the information about the admin user now what happened here is that once we used a simple sql payload sql injection payload we were able to log in as an admin or to get the key used to log in as an admin so we call this sql injection and sql injection happens because there are no filters implemented in the server side namely to prevent sql injection we use parameterized queries let me show you what i mean So this is the secure coding uh, sheet I have been working on. I'm going to give you guys the first version of this sheet, of course, as part of a channel membership. It can be downloaded as well as an MD file. So if you scroll down, I'm still working on this, by the way, I didn't finish. We use parameterized queries to prevent SQL injection. Okay, so there are multiple examples for parameterized queries in Java and in .NET, in PHP. So as you can see in PHP, we use the bind parameter. So take an example. Here we have the connection parameters, the server name, username, password, and DB name. Here we create a new connection. New, use the function mysqli to create a new connection with the parameters we have just created. Now here, before we connect or execute any query to the database, we have to, as you can see, prepare and bind. Check in the parameters that we have provided. So we use the bind parameter, right, to check on the first name, the last name, and the email. Once we checked on the parameters, we can then execute. So the problem is, if we skip this part, we are actually executing whatever is given or uh, assigned in the connection parameters. Let's go back. So here we have the username and password. And what's happening here is that the user the password is not checked 
and it's immediately executed so in order to secure that we have to use this part mine and prepare we have to use parameterize statement using the bind parameter and prepare so if we do that we will check l all the input given by the user so let's use now underscore s which actually uses what i am uh, referring to here and going to send and now it gave false incorrect username and password and that's indeed because this part represents should supposed to be representing the password so when i use parameterize the queries now the input here is checked and is not executed rather it's interpreted as text so basically is if we interpret this as text it will not be executed it will be compared against it will be actually uh, yeah it, the hash will be created out of this and compared to the actual password of the user admin and since it doesn't have doesn't happen to be the password of the user admin as you can see we get false so that's how we prevent injection vulnerabilities to be specific sql of course we have other variations of inj injection vulnerabilities command injection xml injection we talked about these in the previous videos but uh, it's more to understand how to prevent them so now that's for the injection part can injection attacks be carried out to extract data from the database of course we can dump all the information in the database including the username and password that's the purpose of sql injection by the way can injection attacks result in remote code execution yes and uh, this is called sql to shell you can use sql map to um, uh, perform this in an automated manner what is the hey http response code if a user enters an invalid username and password, as you can see, we entered the invalid username and password and we got 4034 button. So that's the response code. Okay, let's move on. Improper asset management. Okay, so what's the API uh, user here? API rule 9. So here we have 9. Slash v1. slash user slash login and here we use post request okay and username and password since we cannot copy i'm going to see where is the password so it's two pound characters one exclamation mark at one pound and two exclamation marks username is alice and yeah login okay great now what's going on here so basically as you can see we have v1 v1 refers to a version of the api endpoint or the web application so basically this version happens to be vulnerable as you can see once we send the post request we can see all of the information about the user now why we why do we call this improper asset management as you can see the title here is improper asset management now improper asset management is not part of the top OWASP top 10 but uh, we can actually call this as improper access control so basically v1 is a version 1 of the API endpoint so when you are in the software development lifecycle and something is under production, it should not should not be uh, used in uh, by uh, used by users in a live in live connection. So basically, here this one is either a test production, a test API, or an API that has been obsolete and or depreciated. So all of the applications. All of the uh, APIs that we use during the software development, especially during web application development, if we have two versions like V1 and V2 of an application, it's better always to hide the previous version from public use. If we let two versions, an old and a new one, to be used by public users, there will be problems, as you can see here. Because version 1 is out of date, it's not patched, so if we let this uh, be used by public users, we are opening the chances of vulnerability exploitation. So that's why we call this improper assets management. So what should be happening here, we should hide 
this API endpoint v1 right and use another one v2 so if we change this to v2 and we send as you can see we get only Alice ID 1 and username in v1 if we go back to v1 we got the balance and we got the country so these information are considered to be sensitive but since v1 is an out-of-date unpatched API endpoint it rendered this information to the public user so when we are we should not use two versions of the same API endpoint or the same application live we should let them one let only one to be used by public users and the other one which happens to be v1 here should be um, archived I don't know what you can do with it but don't let this to be live or in production it's good practice to host all apis on the same server nope so if we are developing an application or a software we should dedicate a separate server for testing purposes once it's live we move it to a production server make an api call to api rule 9 v1 user login using the same okay What's the amount? It was 100 and the country is USA. As you can see, the answer to the question is not is not a brainer. It's easy. Most importantly is the concept. Insufficient logging and monitoring. And this is actually um, something mentioned in the OWASP top 10. Let's take the URL. It's API rule 10 slash logging. And should be get request send okay so that's the message abnormal activity has been detected your IP address and as you can see the attempt has been locked so that's the first API endpoint if there is another one okay so what's the purpose here so basically when we talk about logging and monitoring all of the access attempts by the users should be locked mm -hmm. to be able to investigate the uh, attacks if, if any happened, right? So if we disable logging and monitoring, and if an attack happened, we wouldn't be able to track the attacker. Namely, we wouldn't be able to understand how it happened. That's why we always keep logs of the web server, access logs, error logs, all of these are important to be kept and saved uh, also version and documented and I talked about this here in the document logging and monitoring it's very important to log all of the visitor information the IP address as you can see the browser version that's and the timestamp the, these are pacing information that should be logged about all the users or the visitors when they make access requests or attempts against your server so that was it guys let's see if you have questions should the api logs be publicly accessible so that the attacker must know they are being logged of course not and this is part of uh, excessive exposure if you remember excessive information or information disclosure or excessive information disclosure yes what is the hey HTTP response code in case of successful logging of user information? It is 200. So this way, guys, we wrap up this. And I hope you guys like the series. Don't forget, I will be publishing this as part of the channel membership. Of course, this is not the final version. It will be a very long file. Soon, I will be finishing uh, up this and giving this guys giving this to you guys on the community tab so that was it i will see you in the next video